Hey everybody, welcome back to the Literary Gamers. We've been gone for a while. Oops. Uh, but we're back. Uh, maybe we'll tell you what was going on if we're feeling like it. Yeah. So um, today we're taking a look at Rolling Realms from Stonemeyer Games. This is for one to six players and it lasts about 30 minutes. This is a roll and write and from what I understand this was initially a game that was put out as a print and play during COVID. Uh, it's a game that uses all of Stonemeyer's other games. Uh, as a mechanism for making points and gathering resources and using those based on the card and all that. Now, we're not going to explain to you how to play the game because there's plenty of other videos out there that can explain how to play the game. Um, Rolling Realms um, was sent to us by Stonemaier Games. Thank you for sending this off to us. Um, I'm going to be teaching it at the library in a couple of weeks. So, or a couple years ago, if you're watching this review in a few years from now. In the future or the past, time is a nebulous thing. Uh, so I will clarify that we are we are reviewing just this box. Uh, we are not reviewing any of the other packs. I think there are three of them. There's Terra Mystica, Li the new Libertali one, oh. and then there's one I keep forgetting. But they're just, you know, more cards for the game uh, as you go along. So, Jen, uh, what did you think of Rolling Realms? I used to say that Stonemaier's stuff did not necessarily float my boat. Um, and, or, or last in the house. Or last in the house. Um, and, I mean, I don't know how long this will, um, but I liked it. <laughs> it it's sh pretty short. Yep. The cards are not that bad to understand. It's pretty clear what you gotta do. For each game. Um, it's got some chonky dice. Love chonky dice. I'll pull yeah. them out while... I got it. Well, keep talking, I got it. And I think it's just very fun and funny and meta that all of the cards are... Oh, yeah. Chunky look, dice. Look at them chunkers. Big chunky dice. Like Destiny, Star Wars destiny size dice there. Um, that all, you know, each card is, is games. I think that's kind of cute and clever <laughs> and funny. Um... And they kind of, Stonemaier kind of needed a small box game. Yes. Because all their stuff is in the medium-ish range in terms of weight. Is there smallest box viticulture? I'd have to think about that. If someone would like to comment, please comment below. Um, that, <laughs> I'm so sassy today, it's not even funny. Um, I feel like they... This was a really great introduction for them if they wished to do more smaller box games. That's what I have to say about it. I, I had fun. I had fun. That is a legitimate review. Yes. <laughs> um, I actually think this is a great jumping point for a lot of people who've never played a Stonemaier game. Yeah. To be like, oh, this is kind of an interesting thing. I wonder what, you know, this game Between Two Cities is about. Mm. Uh, I was about to say Scythe, but most people know what Scythe is about by this point, wouldn't you say? Or Wingspan. Yeah, I mean, if you're someone who's super into the hobby. Right. So, the solo I really liked, too. Which, uh, it doesn't follow the same exact procedure as the game. It gives you one round to work on the dice, or sometimes two, depending on the card. But you're kind of given multiple attempts. You're doing a go You're playing a golf course. And you're trying to get to par, but if you can't, you know, if you go past, I think, four attempts, you just, you're not able to get it. And um, at the end of 18 cards, and you don't have to play all 18 at once. I didn't. That'd take a long time. You check your score and you'll see how you did. And uh, I'll pull out how, I'm, how well I'm doing here so I can show the world how terrible I am. I've been doing pretty good, though. I've got a few hole-in-ones. So it gives you a score pad here. Where's the camera? And you write down your scores, and, and you've got the um, how many tries it took for you to do that. Uh, you can do it up to three times here, and if you're a huge solo gamer, you can print more of these off on Stonemeyer's website, I believe. Um, but yeah, you're trying to get um, you know certain things done, and there are certain uh, like blockages maybe on certain cards, and you have to do things this way. I remember there was one where I couldn't... There, there was some sort of hindrance that was really tough, but it, it became more of a puzzle than the standard roll and write, which I appreciate for something that's solo. 
Though I'm pretty sure the internet's telling me I'm doing it wrong because they love to do that. <laughs> we have a cat who's joined us. Um, he may or may not behave himself. I don't know. <laughs> um, so yeah, this will be a pretty quick review. I it didn't take up a huge lot of table presence, which no. was nice at two players. So we're always looking for games that can be portable to bring places to travel with to go to breweries um you know up to a long dinner friend's house um so i love that about that um the erasable markers seemed like they were decent quality and it did come with the um erasers the eraser towels yep as what's, well what's really neat about this game too is because it takes up a little amount of table space let's say you go over to somebody's place or they're coming here and they want to play a super heavy game and it's one you've got to set up mm. but you can go to a different table and at least start with this instead of diving straight into the heavy game and you know, it doesn't take up too much space yeah that's we had fun yeah and that's the most important part yeah did you have a good time Yes. Yeah, and we, we had did. a good time. <laughs> we had a good time. Uh, and, and because we had a good time means that that is honestly our opinion. Because it, it, it doesn't really qualify that if we had a bad time, then it's an honest review, right? Well, on that note, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Jen, the Born Game Librarian. I'm Matt the Dice Chucker. We'll see you next time, everybody. Thanks. <laughs>